This is Wednesday, August 4th, and we have gathered to offer evening prayer right to. We begin on page 115 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let's take a few moments to quiet our hearts and center our minds. The psalmist writes, let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Continuing on page 117, O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Together on page 118, the hymn, O Gracious Light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven. O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The Psalms appointed for this evening are Psalms 81 and 82, beginning on page 704 in the Book of Common Prayer. That's Psalm 81 and 82, beginning on page 704. And just so you know, Psalm 82 continues at the bottom. Uh, when it gets to the bottom of 705, you do need to turn the page for one final verse. So we begin on page 704 with Psalm 81. Let's pray it together in unison. Sing with joy to God our strength and raise a loud shout to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound of the timbrel, the merry harp and the lyre. Blow the ram's horn at the new moon and at the full noon, the day of our feast. For this is a statute for Israel, a law of the God of Jacob. He laid it as a solemn charge upon Joseph when he came out of the land of Egypt I heard an unfamiliar voice saying, I eased his shoulder from the burden. His hands were set free from bearing the load. You called on me in trouble and I saved you. I answered you from the secret place of thunder and tested you at the waters of Meribah. Hear, O oh my people, and I will admonish you. O oh Israel, if you would but listen to me. There shall be no strange God among you. You shall not worship a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and said, Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. And yet my people did not hear my voice, and Israel would not obey me. So I gave them over to the stubbornness of their hearts to follow their own devices. 
Oh, that my people would listen to me, that Israel would walk in my ways. I should soon subdue their enemies and turn my hand against their foes. Those who hate the Lord would cringe before him and their punishment would last forever. But Israel would I feed with the finest wheat and satisfy him with honey from the rock. Continuing the Psalm 82, God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan. Defend the humble and needy. Rescue the weak and the poor. Deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods, and all of you children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth for you shall take all nations for your own. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if any want to become my followers, <clears throat> let them deny themselves and take up their cross and to follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in, glory, in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks to God. Be to God. Our reading from Mark this evening is familiar to most of us. We know that phrase well about denying ourselves and taking up the cross to follow our Lord and losing our life for the sake of the gospel rather than um, gaining the whole world and its wealth and riches, they mean nothing in the end. It's a tough gospel passage to hear. I don't believe Jesus is asking us to die, but rather to recognize what is most important. What's most important in our life? What do we value most? And from our Psalm, as well as this gospel, what we should be valuing most is our relationship with God and the presence of God in our life. For it is that presence that brings life to us, that helps us in the dark times to get up and greet the new day. And that closing sentence of the gospel, where Jesus says, some are standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with glory. And yet we know many of them did see death. So what's that passage really about? Well, it's our understanding of what the kingdom of God is. Remember, Jesus came saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is near. And later he says, the kingdom of God has come to you. It's a reminder that God's kingdom is truly a spiritual realm, something each of us can experience right now and taste and feel it within our hearts, within our minds. And we look to the day when that 
kingdom becomes a physical reality in our midst. But for now, let us be content to have it reign in our hearts and minds and change us from deep within. Amen. Please join with me on page 119 in the song of Mary the Magnificat. We'll pray it together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Continuing on page 120, let's affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Continuing on page 121. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with suffrage A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. We now offer several collects, the collect of the day. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Turning to page 124, a collect for protection. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead. We thank you for the blessings of the day that is past, and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours, 
through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And together, the collect for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. And I offer this collect for our parish. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And again on page 124, together the collect for mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving, having unmuted yourselves and offering those either silently or aloud. For Philip, for Kathy, for Mary, for Linda. For Joni and Kip, and Will and Pat, for Jan, Patrick, Art, Fred, for Scott, for Marcia, Mary P, Ben, for, for Alan Brown, for Dot and John, for Jerry and John Prasad, mm -hmm. for Beth. For Shirley and Cody, Bill and Dottie. Mm -hmm. For the teachers as they prepare for the coming year with all of the difficulties ahead of them. Pray especially for the primary teachers. God bless them. For our health care workers. <coughs> Amen. For the Christian churches in Alberta, Canada. For the people of Afghanistan. Amen. We remember the unemployed and the homeless. We remember all prisoners and orphans, the widowed and those who are lonely. We pray that God would grant us wisdom, courage, and strength to reach out to all in need and be that presence of God to them. O oh Lord, fulfill our petitions and desires as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please join with me in praying together the general thanksgiving on page 125. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.